In today's video, you're going to learn everything you need to know regarding state within React. We're first going to talk about what state even is, and then we're going to discuss the best way to use it in React. And this is going to include using the use state hook. And while I explain how that hook works, I'll also explain how hooks work in general, as well as a couple of rules that you need to know when using hooks. So first things first, what is state in React? And for now, you can just ignore this up here, I'll cover this in just a second. Right now, I am running a live React application, but first we're going to kind of cover things conceptually and then I'll dive into an explanation. So state is the data of your application at any given point of time. And that data will lead to what the user will see on their page. So for example, you might have some data that is the user's name. And maybe on your welcome page, you'll have some introduction that says, hello, and then their name. So you're greeting the user. Well, depending on the user or depending on the current data of your application, that greeting is going to change or that state of your application is going to change. So state is just some data in your program that is going to change over time. And the current state of your application represents what the user is currently seeing on your page. And when using state or when using data that's going to change over time within your application, React gives you some ways to handle that as you're not going to be able to just use like a basic vanilla JavaScript variable and have that change over time. And I'll show you an example of kind of using that and how it doesn't work within a React app. So state is the data of your application at any given point of time. Now, how do you use state within React? So I'm going to show you this example here, but to show you it, I'm going to first comment out this example here, and then we're going to come back up here and uncomment this function. So for this right here, I have a function called app. And what I'm basically doing here is I'm rendering this app function in my web page here. So if I show you my browser here, you're going to see that this is my currently running app. I just have this basic count here and then a button to change count. And if we look at my React app, you're going to see that I am rendering out this overall main tag and I just add some styles here. I'm basically just centering things on my page. A quick CSS tip, if you want to center an element on a page, you can have it be a display grid and then do place item center and that's going to place everything within this grid container just in the center which can be helpful for centering things. But anyways, I render out a title here, which is my count, and then I render a button. And for my button, uh, I have an on-click handler and I pass in handle change account. And what I do when I click my button is I'm gonna set my count to one. And you can see here, I just use a vanilla JavaScript variable here. I don't do anything special. I just say let count is equal to zero, and then on my handle change account, I set my account to one. So when I click this button, what you might expect is I change my count to one. But what you're gonna see here is when I click this, you're gonna see that nothing happens. This state is not reactive because in React, if you want the data of your application to change over time like this, then it's a good idea to use state within React. So just using a JavaScript variable here isn't going to be reactive to this button click and it's not actually going to change the state in ways that you would expect. So how do we actually handle this reactive state within React? Well, let me comment this out here and I'm going to uncomment this here. And the way that React allows you to manage state within a React component is using the use state hook. This is how you use state within React, or this is how you handle data that changes over time, because that's what state is. It's data that changes over time. So to handle this, React gives you a use state hook. And that kind of brings me to what is a hook? I might make a future video explaining hooks more in depth, but kind of the, the sh long story short of it is that a hook is just a JavaScript function that allows you to hook into some React features. And these React features are things like managing state or managing the component lifecycle of rendering and mounting, unmounting to the page and different things like that. Now, hooks do have a couple of rules to them. 
in which if you don't abide by these rules, React is going to yell at you. So for one, hooks must be called at the top of a function. So in this example here, I do have this. This is a use state hook. I'll explain all this in a second. But you can see that I call this right at the top of the body of this function. I call it right at the top. And the reason that this is needed is because we can't call hooks within loops, conditionals, or nested functions. They need to be executed within the same order. So I cannot call this hook within this nested function here. React is not going to like that. I need to call this hook in the top level of my React component. And also, I could not, if I had like an if statement here, so if I was like, okay, if my data is loading, then I'm just going to return null. I could not do that because this hook needs to be at the top level of the function because it has to be called in order. You can't have a situation in which, okay, we're sometimes when this component renders, we do call this state hook, but sometimes when it renders, we don't call it. No, it has to be called at the very top level of your component. And an additional rule is that hooks need to be called within a React functional component. You cannot use a hook within a React class component, and then you cannot use a hook within just a kind of vanilla JavaScript function. It needs to be a functional React component. So let's dive in to how this use state hook actually works. So first thing that you need to do here, and you'll see at the top of my page here, I am importing the use state hook from React. So you need to first import the hook from React, and that will give you access to use this hook or use this function. And then what you can see, I have my same app as earlier, but here at the very top of my app, I create two variables here, and then I assign it to the return value of running this use state function. And then I call it with an argument here. So this is me calling the React hook and then I pass it an argument. So what's going on here? Well, this use state hook, it's just a function. And the first time I call this function, I pass it a default value. So when you first call the use state hook within React, you pass it a default value. So this is setting my count to zero as a default value. Now, this function is actually going to return an array, and it's gonna have an array of two elements. The first element, the zeroth index of that array, is going to be your state. It's going to be a state value. So the first element is going to be a state value. And the second element is going to be a way to set that state. It's going to be a function that allows you to set your state. So this is going to allow me to change my state over time. And my web page is then going to be reactive to those state changes. And React will preserve this count value across multiple function calls. So, you know, you could render this app function multiple times, meaning you're going to be calling this function multiple times, but this count will be preserved and it's not going to be set to zero every single time. That's just going to be on the first time that this specific app function renders. But when you have re-renders or you call this app multiple times, the, the count will be preserved across those multiple function calls. All right. And this default value, it can also be of any type. It could be an object, it could be a string, so on and so forth. Now, for using more complex state like objects, I think a potentially better approach here might be to use something like use reducer, but I will have future videos on that. So the use state hook returns an array and what I'm doing here, and you'll see this as kind of like best practice or the most common way to do this is I am destructuring these values right away. So I am destructuring the first element of this array that's returned here and assigning it to the variable of count. And then the second element, the first index, I'm setting to set count. And that's going to be the function to set state. And I could do the same thing here. I could just assign this to an array. And then I could create two variables. I could say const count is equal to array at zero. But I think destructuring here is just more readable and makes quite a bit of sense. So the use state hook is a 
react function that will return an array in which the first element is some state value and the second element is some way to set that state value and then you pass the use state hook a default value and on the first render of this app component that's what this count is going to be set to or that's what your state value will be set to it's this default value and then it's going to preserve that value across multiple renders. Now, in the body of my function, I have the very same thing. I have, I render out my count in an H1, and then I render a button in which it has an on click handler. And in this handle change count, I set my count to one. So we're going to see if this now works within my app. So if I click this button, what you're going to see is I do indeed set this to a count of one. So I do get that reactive state change. Now, what if I don't just wanna set this to one? What if I want to set this based on my previous state value? Well, you might think that the best way to do this would be to do something like, I'll just do count plus one and I'll pass that in. And when I do this here, you're gonna see that, I mean, it looks like it works here, but, you'll see that this kind of has a got you when doing this. So React will, it will batch these state updates. So, you know, here, theoretically, you'd think that I'm setting the count to plus one and then I'm doing it again. So theoretically, I am incrementing the count by two each time I call this handle change count. But we, what you see here is that when I click this button, it actually just continues to go up by one. And that's because the way that React will batch its set state calls here is it's basically saying, okay, if the count right now is 17, then in this set state call, it's going to call, okay, give us 17 plus one. But it's going to kind of batch these calls together. So in this set state call, it's going to say, give us 17 plus one. So both of these calls are actually going to say, 17 plus one. So when I call this, it just gives us 18. So how do we fix this? Well, the way to fix this is that when you want to set state based on previous state within a set state function. So I'm using this set state function that React will give us as the second element of its return array from use state. We can actually pass in a function to set state. And in that function, React will automatically pass the current state as an argument to that function. So I can actually do count and pass in an anonymous function here, and then I can return what I want my state to be. So I return count plus one, and I can do the very same thing here. So here, this is going to guarantee that I'm always setting the state based on my previous state which will kind of prevent these bugs. So now you can see when I change this, it actually increments by two every time because in both of these set state calls, it's gonna guarantee me that this count right here is the most up-to-date previous state. And I just increment that by one. And then as you can see, it's still gonna work just fine like so. All right, so if you want to set state based off previous state, pass a function to your set state function and React will pass the current state as an argument to that. And then you can set your state based off of your current state. Now, what if I actually want more than just one state value in my component? How should I handle this? Well, I think the, the easiest way to handle this is actually just to add another state variable here. So here I'm going to set a description. I'm going to have a use state and I'm going to just say this is my description. So here if you want to use more than just one kind of state value within your component, you can just call the use state again and you can manage these separate pieces of state within your component. And here I can just render out maybe a p tag and then pass in my description to that p tag. And then you're going to see I have this is my description rendered to the page here. And then 
if I wanted to change this, I could change it within here. So I'll just do set description. And then what should I do here? Well, I will actually use my previous description. So I will pass that a function to this setter here. And I am going to return a template literal in which I have a description. And then I'm going to actually just render out my count here. So you can see that this description, as well as my count, will change over time. So if I come back to here and I change my account, you can see that I'm just appending my account to my description every time. To handle multiple pieces of state within a component, you can just add additional use state calls. Now, we kind of talked about passing this its default value here, but what this is going to do is on every mounting of this app component, it is going to initialize this, this value here with your default value. Now, what if you had like some complex operation here in which say you're calculating like a, a Fibonacci number, something with a very poor time complexity? Well, you can actually pass a function to this use state hook here. And when you pass it a function, it will only initialize this with a default value on its very first mounting. So by passing it a function here, if I had some complex operation, that would prevent me from redoing that very complex operation every time that I mount this component. It would kind of effectively cache that operation and I would be just fine here. Now, most of the time, you, you don't need to do this. I don't know if I've actually ever done this within my React com components. Usually, I'm not doing a crazy complex calculation when I'm just using these component state calls. And usually, it might be best to handle those elsewhere. But if you do want to prevent a complex calculation or a slow calculation to happen when you initialize this app component, then you can pass this use state call a function and it will only be initialized on that very first mount. All right. Now with that, there's one last thing that it's important to know about the use state hook. And that is if I use an object as my passed in value to this use state hook. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to initialize it with an object that has a count of zero. And then we'll do a description. I'm just going to do my description here. And then instead of calling this count and set count, I'm going to just say state and set state. So what this is going to return on this initial render is going to be an object containing a count property and a description property with these default values here of zero and my description. And then it gives me a state setter just like it normally would. Now here, instead of just rendering count, I need to do state.count. And instead of description, I need to do state.description. And I will show you kind of the trick here that you need to know in just a second, but let me make sure everything works. So this all still works. I have my description initialized to my description, and then my count is zero. Now, if I want to set my state and my state is an object, well, in React classes, React would automatically merge your previous and your new state. So all I would have to do here is in a React class, I could just set my count is equal to one, and that will automatically merge everything that existed on this object. So my description would still be there. It would just stay the same as it was. But you'll see that within React functional components here, when I change my account here, you actually see my description completely disappear. And that's because when a object is your state value that's returned from the use state hook, it's not going to do an auto merge of that object when you set your state. Which means that you need to make sure that you don't lose your properties of that object when you do those set state calls using an object. Now, luckily with kind of new features of JavaScript, we can handle that fairly easily. So here, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to pass this state setter a function, and I'm going to take my previous state, 
So I'll just say prev state. And then what I want to do here is I want to return an object. So here I'm going to return an object. And with this implicit return here, to return an object, I need to wrap it in parentheses so JavaScript can di differentiate between the body of a function and the curly braces of an object here. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first spread my previous state into this object. And I will have videos soon on the spread operator and destructuring. But what I can first do is spread this object. And basically, it's going to add all the properties and values of my previous state here. And then for the property I want to change, I can just overwrite that property. As in JavaScript objects, if you add a property to an object twice, the property you add last is going to be the one that stays. It's going to overwrite the property that you wrote before you wrote your last property. So here I can set my count. I'll just set it to one here. And when I do this, this is going to maintain my description property because I'm spreading my count and my description onto my object here. And then I'm going to overwrite my count value with the value of one. So if I refresh my page here and I get my description back and then I change my count, you're going to see my description does stay now because I don't lose my property on my state object. That is going to persist because I spread it here. Now, what if I want to set my count based on my previous count? Well, I can do the very same thing that I did earlier. I can access my prev state dot count, and then I can just increment that by one. And here, if I come back and I refresh my page, you can see that now I can increment my count here and my description will remain the same because I am ensuring to spread that property into my object here. So when you're using an object as your state value, make sure to maintain your properties by using the spread operator here, or just be aware that React isn't going to do an auto merge and you will lose properties if you don't handle that correctly here. And if you're finding yourself needing to use like more complex objects in your state, I would say maybe the use reducer hook that React gives you might be a better use case for that as that's used for more kind of complex state, but we'll cover that in future videos. So state within React represents the data of your application at any given point of time. And this state will lead to what the user sees on their page. And the state can change over time. So the state of your application might vary because the data of your application might vary and that will change what the user will see on the page. Now, in React, you're not going to be able to have a reactive state by just using JavaScript variables. You need to kind of hook into React and use their use state hook. And this use state hook, well, this is just a JavaScript function that allows you to use state within React. And this hook must be called at the top level of your function. You cannot call it within loops or conditions or any nested functions because it needs to be executed in the same order on each re-render. And this hook must also be called within a React functional component. And when you use the use state hook, you first pass it a default value. It can be of any type. And React will return an array of two elements. The first element is going to be that state value. And the second element is going to be a state setter in which you can set that state over time and have your data be reactive. And your user is going to see those updates when you call that set state call. It's going to trigger a re-render of your app and set that state to change the data of your application. And if you want to use multiple pieces of state within your React component, you can just call the use state hook as many times as you want, and you'll have separate slices of state. And if you want to set your state based on previous state, then you should pass a function to the state setter and then use the argument that React gives you, which is the previous state. And then whatever you return is going to be set as your state there. And if you use objects within your state setter, React will not auto merge your object with your previous state. So make sure you don't lose properties if you're wanting to maintain them across renders. So hopefully this gives you a good idea on how state works in React. Stay tuned for future videos on user reducer and other React hooks. And I will see you in that next one.